This video is about T helper 1 cells and intracellular pathogens. We know that uh, T cells are uh, grouped as helper T cells, cytotoxic T cells, and regulatory T cells. The helper T cells are further classified on the basis of cytokines they produce. So there are Th1 cells, Th2 cells, Th17, and T follicular helper cells. For example, Th1 cells produce interferon gamma, that's the signature cytokine, and this interferon gamma determines what uh, function these Th1 cells are going to perform. Th2 cells produce IL4, IL5, IL13, the TH17s produce IL17 and IL22 and T follicular helper T cells produce IL21 and interferon gamma or IL4. So on the basis of these signature cytokines, the functions of these helper cells are determined. Today I'm going to uh, discuss Th1 helper cells and intracellular pathogens and uh, let's see what happens when an intracellular pathogen is uh, present in the body. We can uh, assume that uh, the patient or the person is suffering from tuberculosis so the pathogen is going to be most probably in the lungs so let's see here I'm drawing a lung and assuming that TB pathogen is present inside the patient. So we know that uh, tissues have got the dendritic cells as the sentinel cells that can detect the presence of the pathogens and uh, there are also uh, macrophages which are present in the lungs as well. So what will happen? These dendritic cells have got specialized receptors on their surface and these receptors are called as PRR, pattern recognition receptors. One of the example of this PRR is toll-like receptors. They are also present on macrophages and what they'll do they'll detect the presence of this uh, TB pathogen, mycobacterium tuberculosis. And normally, the dendritic cell, when they are in the tissues, they are as uh, immature dendritic cells, and the macrophages are as resting macrophages, so they don't have the activated the properties that uh, activated macrophages or dendritic cells have, so they don't have those properties. But once they recognize the pathogen with the help of these pattern recognition receptors or toll like receptors, now they are going to change. And these dendritic cells, now what will happen to these dendritic cells? They'll be able to move. So we know that uh, at the hilum of the lungs are hilar lymph nodes. So these are the regional lymph nodes for the lungs and I'll draw a lymph node, big size lymph node, because we have to discuss in detail 
what's happening in the lymph node so that's why I've drawn a big size of this lymph node so through afferent lymphatics the dendritic cells are going to move to the lymph nodes and what they have done is they have captured the TB pathogen and uh, broken them down into small pieces and then now they are going to move in the lymphatics towards the lymph node now in the lymph node when they reach now they are no more immature they are mature dendritic cells and these mature dendritic cells have got certain properties now they have broken them these uh, TB uh, pathogen and they will now express them on their surface with the help of a specialized receptor that is called as MHC class 2 so the pathogen is in its receptor MHC class 2 on the other hand we have to think about the blood vessels they have got lymphocytes so here we have got T lymphocytes these are the T lymphocytes and we have also got the B lymphocytes in the blood these T lymphocytes are going to enter the lymph nodes and now they are going to interact with the dendritic cells normally all T lymphocytes they have got on their surface uh, TCR so they have got TCR on their surface and because we are now talking about CD4 positive cells so they will have a CD4 receptor as well CD4 receptor and with the help of MHC class 2 CD4 and TCR interaction the TB pathogen is going to be presented from dendritic cell to the T cell so it will be presented then another thing happens once the dendritic cell capture the pathogen with the help of PRR they start to express co-stimulatory molecules and these co-stimulatory molecules are CD80 and 86 so I'll draw these co-stimulatory molecules here these are the co-stimulatory molecules and so the CD80 and 86 on the antigen presenting cell that is the dendritic cell is going to interact with CD28 on the T cell the uh, CD4 positive T cell and now this T cell which is out of the billions of the cells that are circulating in the blood but it is special special or specific against the TB pathogen so out of billions of of T cells just a few cells are specific for the TB pathogens and they have arrived in the lymph node and they have been presented the TB antigen with the help of MHC class 2 CD4 TCR and co-stimulatory signal so in initially this T cell could be named as naive mature T cell and once it recognizes the specific or the cognate antigen it is uh, specific for now it is primed so it has been primed or activated for the first time so it has been primed or activated for the first time these uh, dendritic cells are going to uh, produce certain special cytokines and uh, these important cytokines that are produced by the dendritic cells I'll just 
right the most important one IL 12 is being released by these dendritic cells towards the T cells now what will happen with these uh, T cells these T cells are going to once they are activated these T cells are going to produce IL2 by themselves and they will also start expressing a receptor for IL2 which is called as CD25 or the beta chain of IL2 receptor what it will help in it it will have an autocrine effect so the T cells are producing these cytokines for themselves once they start binding these IL2 start binding to the CD25 the T cells will proliferate T cells will proliferate very rapidly and we will have now a huge number of T cell clones which are specific against TB pathogen and this step is termed as clonal expansion this is called as clonal expansion these uh, T cells now when interact with IL-12 these T cells when interact with IL-12 they will be differentiated into TH1 cells TH1 cells these are called as TH1 cells and now we have got specialized TH1 cells which are against these TB pathogens. So these TH1 cells are going to now move towards the tissue or the infected tissue. So let's see here in the lungs what happens is we'll see that TH1 cells have arrived here and they are going to now, TH1 cells are going to now surround the macrophage which has also captured the TB pathogen so as I said resting macrophages they capture the TB pathogens with the help of uh, PRR and once the pathogen has been recognized these may also express the MHC class 2 on their surface so they will also express the MHC class 2 on their surface along with co-stimulatory signals now in this case they are CD40 and CD40 ligands so macrophages will have CD40 receptor while the TH1 cells will have CD40 ligand these ligands are produced by uh, the TH1 cells and they are going to bind to the CD40 receptor on macrophages and uh, similarly they, they also have got TCR on their surface and these TCRs will uh, receive the, the, the antigen from the MHC class 2 so here is the TCR and CD4 on the TH1 cells which will interact with uh, MHC class 2 now these TH1 cells are termed as effector cells activated or effector cells that have come from the lymph node so these are called as effector cells here I would like to uh, just emphasize the fact that uh, the macrophages they are presenting the antigen same with the uh, MHC class 2 on their surface to T cells 
and here you can see inside the lymph nodes the dendritic cells are also presenting the antigen with the help of mhc class 2 and cd4 two t cells but these two antigen presentation first you have got two different phases of antigen presentation one is taking place in the lymph node from the dendritic cells to the cd4 cells which are naive and mature whereas this one which is taking place in the at the site of infection these ones are between macrophages and effector cells or activated th1 cells so that's the difference the dendritic cell present the antigen to naive mature t cells whereas the macrophages they present the antigen to effector or activated th1 cells and now what will happen inside the macrophages we know that the tb pathogen it is in the phagosome and there are also lysosomes which have got a lot of enzymes inside them so the phagosome will bind to the lysosome and then it it can uh, put these uh, enzymes inside the uh, phagosome and then the pathogen can be destroyed but sometimes what happens is that the TB pathogen is very clever and to resist this damage this TB pathogen blocks the fusion of phagosome with the lysosome so this fusion is blocked and because of that it resists the damage that can occur by uh, the, the enzymes and to, to, to make these macrophages optimally activated, these helper T cells, the signature cytokines that are produced by them is called as interferon gamma. So now let's see what's the impact of interferon gamma on these macrophages. So let me draw a macrophage here. And uh, the receptor for interferon gamma is on the surface of the macrophage and here is the phagosome here is the lysosome and once the uh, the interferon gamma is produced it will come and bind to its receptor this interferon gamma is going to activate the macrophages optimally And what will happen? Two things will happen. Reactive oxygen species, they will be produced as well as reactive nitrogen species, they will be produced. Reactive oxygen species include hydrogen peroxide and oxygen reactive nitrogen species include nitric oxide, which are highly microbicidal for the pathogens and other than that the uh, the certain hydrolases and uh, uh, enzymes will be activated in, in in these lysosomes as well and this will try to effectively kill the pathogen and uh, sometimes in certain cases as i said when the tb pathogen try to block the fusion of phagosome with the lysosome then there will be a uh, lot of uh, incoming T lymphocytes which will surround these uh, macrophages and will produce lots of interferon gamma so they'll try to activate these macrophages optimally and uh, therefore a collar of T cells will be produced around these macrophages and then these macrophages sometimes join together to prevent the spread of the TB pathogen and they will prepare giant cells in the middle. Now, uh, in the same context, I'll talk about another pathogen, another intracellular pathogen, which is called as the uh, Listeria monocytogens. So, for, they are mostly in the intestine. So, just I'll show you here. So imagine uh, an epithelial cell of the intestine has got the pathogen and again here around it there are macrophages which can capture the 
Listeria organism. Listeria monocytogen. Listeria monocytogen, it's a gram positive bacteria. It can be captured by the phagosome and then the lysosome should join to prepare phagolysosome and they should be able to kill the listeria pathogen but sometimes what happen is that this listeria is capable of damaging the phagosome membrane and come into the cytoplasm or the cytosol so here i would like to explain the thing that when the macrophages engulf a pathogen and they are in the uh, in the phagosome and phagosome lysosome joining will help in the killing of the pathogen but sometimes they escape the phagosome and come into the cytoplasm now they are no more in the vesicles and when they come in the cytoplasm that time they are now going to be presented on the surface not with the help of MHC class 2 in fact with the help of another receptor which is called as MHC class 1 MHC class 1 which is specific for intracellular pathogens intracellular pathogens inside the macrophages now to deal with them we need CD8 cells so what happens is that inside the lymph node so I'll draw another dendritic cell here actually uh, it's imagine it's happening all in the lymph node so here is the dendritic cell this dendritic cell once again it's going to use uh, it's uh, different receptors on its surface for example here you can see it has got MHC and this time it's going to be MHC class 1 and the reason is because it's going to present the antigen to CD8 cells so now it's presenting the antigen to CD8 cells and it will be presented to TCR and CD8 receptor and once again there will be co-stimulatory molecules and again the co-stimulatory molecules on the dendritic cells are going to be CD80 and here it's going to be CD28 and the T cells which are here in this case they are cytotoxic T lymphocytes as long as they are not activated they are simply called as CD8 cells but once they are activated now they are termed as cytotoxic T lymphocytes so these cytotoxic T lymphocytes again similar thing will happen to them IL2 will be produced and huge number of cells will be produced so the cytotoxic T lymphocytes number will be increased so clonal expansion will occur now this clonal expansion of CD8 T cells or cytotoxic T lymphocyte is against listeria monocytogens and these, these uh, cytotoxic T lymphocytes now are going to move towards the site of infection and here they will come in contact with the macrophage that has got uh, listeria monocytogen and the uh, the antigen will be presented with the help of MHC class 2 and CD8 cells have got CD8 on its surface now one thing that I would like to uh, clarify here that now at this point when the pathogen is being presented with the help of MHC class 2 to the effector cell or the activated CD8 cell they do not need any more co-stimulatory signal so they have been already activated these are now all cytotoxic 
T lymphocytes and they will recognize the Listeria antigen with the help of uh, CD8 receptor through MHC class 2, no co-stimulatory signal needed and now they will start triggering their uh, killing machinery and what is that? They have got certain enzymes which are called as perforins. These perforins are going to make holes in the wall of these macrophages and these perforins will make holes in the wall of the uh, macrophages and they will release granzymes. These granzymes will be released inside. What these granzymes will do? They will activate uh, the enzyme system called caspases and those caspases will induce apoptosis programmed cell death. That's one system. Another, uh, they also have got uh, specialized uh, ligand, fast ligand, that is called as the death ligand. Fast ligand is produced by the cytotoxic T lymphocyte and it is going to bind to its fast receptor on the target cell. So they have got fast receptor and once they bind it will also induce apoptosis so these are the two different mechanisms according to which these effector cytotoxic T lymphocytes cytotoxic T lymphocytes are going to target or kill the target cells one is through the uh, perforin granzymes and the other one is through the fast ligand fast receptor binding and these infected macrophages which have got listeria monocytosis they will be destroyed so that's all these are the two different scenarios one where the pathogen uh, was inside the inside the phagosome of the macrophage and they were optimally activated with the help of interferon gamma and uh, this interferon gamma tried to activate the macrophages while on the other hand we also uh, have situations where the pathogen can uh, move from the phagosome to the cytosol and uh, they are dealt slightly differently and the cytotoxic T lymphocytes come into play and uh, they will then destroy the macrophage which has got the pathogen by the process of apoptosis. Thanks for listening and uh, keep uh, watching the videos on our uh, website. Thank you.